Africa is making headlines again, not for conflict, debt, or aid, but for a jaw-dropping, era-defining megaproject that may just change the global order as we know it. We're talking about the long-anticipated, finally ready-to-launch Moses Bridge, a $4 billion engineering marvel that will physically connect Africa to Asia across the Red Sea. Yes, you read that right. Africa is building a literal bridge to Asia, and you can bet your last dollar that this news has sent shockwaves throughout the Western world, especially in the United States, where even Donald Trump, a man known for his grandiose infrastructure ambitions, is rumored to be shocked by the audacity and scale of this African-era collaboration. Why would he be? For years, Africa has been painted as the continent that receives, not builds. But now, Africa is building bridges, literally. And not just any bridge, but one that connects two continents. And not with the West, but with Asia. That's got to sting. But how did this all come about? Let's take a step back. The Moses Bridge, symbolically named after the biblical story of the parting of the Red Sea, is a monumental collaboration between Egypt and Saudi Arabia. Originally announced in 2016 by Saudi Arabia's King Salman, this ambitious project has taken years of careful planning. And now Egypt's transport minister Kamal al-Wazir has confirmed that every inch of planning is complete. The project is finally set to rise. The bridge will span the Strait of Tehran, directly linking Ras Hamid in Saudi Arabia with Egypt's iconic resort city of Sharm el-Sheikh. For decades, the idea of a Red Sea bridge connecting Africa and Asia was proposed in Shell, starting all the way back in 1988. Politics, regional instability, and Western disinterest or sabotage delayed what should have been a game-changing structure. But now, history is rewriting itself. So what exactly are we talking about in terms of scale? Picture this, a 30-mile bridge, yes, 30 miles, stretching across one of the most geopolitically and religiously symbolic waterways in the world. That's longer than the English Channel Tunnel and longer than the Golden Gate Bridge 50 times over. It's about the same distance as driving from New York's JFK Airport to downtown Manhattan and back on a bridge. That's the length Africa and Asia are daring to cross physically and metaphorically. And this isn't just shallow water either. We're talking about engineering a bridge over waters that are half a mile deep. Let that sink in. It's not just about concrete and steel. It's about ambition, courage, and continental pride. Now to the money, a whooping $4 billion, fully financed by Saudi Arabia. No loans from the IMF, no conditional aid from the World Bank, no Western interference, just two nations deciding to build something together on their own terms. This is the kind of financial independence and strategic collaboration that the West fears most. Why? Because it marks a tectonic shift. For once, Africa is not being dictated to. It's leading, partnering, and visioning. And with Saudi Arabia footing the bill, the geopolitical narrative suddenly changes. The bridge also ties directly into Saudi Arabia's futuristic $500 billion Neem City project, a bold attempt to create a next-gen tech hub near the kingdom's borders. And Egypt? It's setting itself up as a true gateway, not just to Africa, but to the future. But let's not be fooled, this bridge is only the beginning. Egypt and Saudi Arabia have been working behind the scenes on numerous other mega-projects, from futuristic cities to alternative trade routes, the Red Sea is quietly becoming the most valuable economic corridor after the Suez Canal. For instance, massive infrastructure developments like the Egypt-Saudi Electricity Interconnection Project, which aims to exchange up to 3,000 megawatts of power, the two nations are laying down a blueprint for economic and strategic dominance. They've also partnered on Red Sea tourism initiatives, logistics hubs, and special economic zones that will boost trade, create jobs, and redefine connectivity between Africa and Asia. This deepening collaboration signals a seismic shift in global power dynamics, and the West is definitely watching. Now imagine the benefits. First, trade. 
The current maritime route between Egypt and Saudi Arabia relies on a fleet of 13 cargo and passenger ships managed by the Arab Bridge Maritime Company. But that's about to be history. With the Moses Bridge, cargo can flow faster, cheaper, and more reliably. For African exporters trying to reach Asia, this is a game changer. Next, tourism. The Red Sea already draws millions of tourists. Add a massive bridge, and suddenly road tripping from Cairo to Riyadh becomes a reality. And what about religious pilgrimage? Over a million people travel for Hajj every year. This bridge will offer an alternative land route straight into Saudi Arabia, easing congestion at airports and enhancing accessibility for African Muslims. That's not just convenience, it's empowerment. Then there's employment. The project is expected to create thousands of jobs on both sides of the Red Sea. Engineers, construction workers, suppliers, hospitality staff, logistics coordinators, the opportunities are endless. This isn't charity, it's self-driven development. African economies have long been trapped in aid dependency narratives, but this bridge screams the opposite. We can build, we can lead, and we can link ourselves to the world on our own terms. Yet despite all the positives, don't expect the West to cheer us on. Far from it. Every new sign of Africa's awakening seems to provoke a fresh wave of anxiety in Western capitals. Why is that? Could it be because such collaborations expose the myth that Africa can't lead? That without colonial oversight, we collapse? Or maybe it's because projects like the Moses Bridge show what Africa can achieve when it turns east instead of west. For decades, we've been told that our future depends on handouts. Now we're building billion-dollar infrastructure linking continents. What happens when other African countries start looking to Asia for their own mega-projects? What happens when the power balance shifts away from Paris, London, and Washington? One can't help but see this bridge not just as a piece of infrastructure, but as a declaration. It's a loud, defiant statement that Africa is no longer a passive player in global affairs. We are no longer waiting to be invited to the table. We are building our own. And this time, the table stretches across continents. The Moses Bridge is not just a bridge between Egypt and Saudi Arabia. It's a bridge between Africa's past of exploitation and its future of independence and innovation. In the end, the real shock isn't that the bridge is being built. The real shock for the West is that it wasn't built for them. And maybe that's the most beautiful part of this entire story. Because the Moses Bridge might just be the first of many to come. As Africa begins to lift its gaze and build bold connections beyond old colonial shackles, the world will have no choice but to reckon with a continent that is not only rising, but leading. The age of African submission is ending. The age of African vision has begun. Your perspective matters. What do you make of this $4 billion bridge set to connect Africa to Asia? Share your thoughts and insights in the comments section below. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to the New Africa Wealth and turn on the notification bell so you don't miss any of our informative future videos. Stay informed, stay engaged, and thank you for watching.